Hello and welcome to a domestic energy update special on Fully Charged. Uh, I'm trying to do, I get asked a lot about uh, the system that I've had installed in this house. Uh, and, it, you know, there's no short answer. I'm going to do this as succinctly as I can, the update, because now I've had this system installed for, what is it, six to eight months. I, I've got the, the basic understanding of what happens, because it's a, it, it was a really big change. So the first thing I want to get out of the way is the fact that I had to have a three-phase supply into this house. It's a very uh, location-specific problem. So we live in a very small village at the very end, the very end of a grid a local grid network the local area network is like that and we're at the end of one of those things right at the very tippy end so we have a very limited supply so it had to be beefed up to, because i'm having uh, a lot of solar and uh, an extra battery now that battery has been in in for uh, i think four years uh, and there was no problem putting that one in but when i got the second battery which i explain how this came about in the the episode that we did last year about it when this battery arrived the local area network dno district network operators uh got a bit panicky so here's the problem you get a power cut in, in the grid nothing to do with this particular house just generally there's a fault they have to send a team out who then go up on a, on a crane to inspect whatever it is the local um, transformer or a substation nearby and they have to know that there's no power going into that system to make it safe for those those people to operate uh, in that environment very understandable and one of their fears was if you've got all this power stored here what will happen is that power will go back into the grid through the through this wire it will go it'll go back that way the electricity can go both ways in this wire it can do that in all wires but it can do it in this wire so it'll be sending could be sending out enough electricity to cause serious harm big big problem so what do you do about it well that is what this is this is the gateway this whole box is just a switch that's how big it is and what this switch does and we've now tested it when we first tested it there were a lot of issues with timing now it is on, on you cannot tell when whether we've got grid electricity or there's been a power cut or not we can't tell it's so instantaneous this thing switches in in some hundredths of a second So in order to do a demonstration of, and I can't talk too loud because it's late, and all the little baby birds are sleeping. But anyway, uh, to do a demonstration of what happens uh, with the gateway here and the batteries, which are very full at the moment, it's been a very sunny day today, if we do get a power cut. Now, interestingly, since I recorded the first bit in here and tonight, we've had a power cut. I only saw it on the app. We had a power cut of 29 seconds. I didn't even know. This is one of my studio lights. I brought that in here to, so it gives a very clear indication if the lights go off and on, you're going to see it very clearly. This is the main power supply, so I'm now going to turn that off and see what happens. I've got my fingers crossed a bit. It's quite hard. I know nothing happened. <laughs> I don't know, did you see any flickering? The app will register a power cut at this time, so it's, it's actually uh, half past 11 at night. Well, it's been light. It's light till really late at the moment. Anyway, I'm going to put the power back on, because I don't want to leave it off. There we go. It works. That is the, the, the change that's made all this technology possible. That's, in, its, in many ways, that's the most important part of this whole system. So these two batteries then contain a lot of that uh, electricity and at the moment they're 100% full. So what happens when they're 100% full and there's a lot of sunshine like there is today and they got to 100% full at 11.30 this morning. So we used a bit overnight to heat water, nothing really. So they were nearly full this morning, the sun comes out really early, hits the solar panels, they're generating power. Where does that power go? Follow me. So that electricity comes here and then it goes through this cable and into the car. So uh, <coughs> what this does, this is the, the My Energy Zappy. I've, we've talked about this before. We've done programs about it, interviewed them. It's, it's a very simple product, but brilliant. All this does is take any electricity that's generated by the solar panels that would normally go into the grid. It takes that, puts it into the car. It's as simple as that. So if we use the oven or the washing machine or something in the house, the electricity goes there first. 
and so that will reduce the amount going into the car but as soon as the car as soon as the that we're not using that as soon as there's excess energy coming off the panels it goes into the car well so far today it's put in 12.2 kilowatt hours okay so what i'm going to show you now is how the various ways I can see what's happening. So this is this is reading the car now. It's currently at 121 miles. When I plugged it in yesterday, it was at 48 miles, I think. So it's done it's done quite well. It's charging at roughly nine miles range an hour. That will fluctuate all the time because uh, it's a, a varying amount of uh, electricity coming off the solar panels. So that's the car. I can then swap to the house battery. And we can see what that well that's currently at a hundred percent which is why the power is going into the car you can see here that will show 3.6 kilowatts coming off the solar and 3.6 going in at the moment going into the house because it reads the car as the house so every now and there's a little bit of spill that goes back into the grid but you can see today it is an exceptional day that is the solar energy that's coming into the house so we so so far had 29 kilowatt hours coming into the house coming on off the panels we can then see what's come from the grid today uh, uh, it, it always takes a tiny bit but 1.3 kilowatts and that uh, you can see the little bits that have gone into the grid which is when i've been moving cars or swapping around so to the grid 1.9 kilowatts has gone to the grid the battery you can see there has uh, used a little bit overnight that's on the left and then over on the right is uh, this bit the, the bit down here is where the battery charged so it took 12.4 kilowatts into the battery today and then immediately that uh, the battery was full it switches off and then the house takes over so that uh, you, what you can see there is that is the car in fact this is the house using some of it and then it zaps up really a lot so it's using everything it can uh, from the solar to charge the car and then you'll see that this map this um, the solar matches perfectly with the use from the house. Let's just have a look at the performance of the um, system. So at the moment today, it's 91%. The house is 91% uh, running from solar, which is the yellow, and power wall, which is the green. But we can look at previous days. So yesterday was fairly similar, 92% yesterday. The day before, probably less because it wasn't so sunny, 89%. So that, that's sort of been like that for a long time. We can now have a look at weeks. So that is the, the most recent week, which is only two days. So that's at 91%. Week before that was last week. Um, that's a full week. So 81% of the power that we used was coming from, from that. The week before that, 88%. So as you can see, it's basically... <laughs> An enormous amount of the power we're using is coming from this so that's 90 percent. so those are the last three weeks and we can then look at months so i think this month is quite good yeah 85 percent for may april i would imagine it's going to be lower no it's more 86 wow i haven't actually looked at that but then okay i'm going to show you what the reality of this so that is the month before march 43 percent. so much less let's have a look at february lousy 22 percent. so you know it varies over the year. i'm not trying to lie and, and make it look better than it really is now this is the uh, the my energy uh graph which in many ways is more informative so this is uh, what's running the the zappy and all those things so you can really see where the power's going it's coming from the solar panels 35 kilowatts going into the house which is only getting 100 100 uh, percent green energy as it's saying the house itself that separates the house and the car the house itself is 0.4 of a kilowatt then 0.1 uh into the grid it dribbles a bit into the grid 0.2 of a kilowatt and then 3.2 going into the car ah now at the moment you can see there's 0.4 of a kilowatt coming from the battery to go into the oh, that's that's unusual but i mean these it, this is on and off all the time it's flicking up and down um constantly but uh, as you can see the vast majority of it is going into the car that's the important thing now there is one final part of the puzzle that i haven't talked about yet and that is this this baby is a vehicle to grid unit. This is the really big game changer, I think. Uh, and so I've been, been used, this has been used as an experiment with me and there's, we have a problem. Okay, so the energy supplier 
that is running this scheme uh, where they're testing out vehicle to grid systems are called Ovo, amazing energy company. I, I went to a launch of theirs recently. They're one of the sort of bigger companies that are absolutely driving towards absolute zero carbon fuel generation, all renewables. And so they're doing some really exciting things. But one of the things they're testing is vehicle to grid. Now, let me explain what I understand vehicle to grid to mean, because actually it's, it's as much vehicle to house as it is to vehicle to grid. The two problems I have, <laughs> one, uh, Ovo Energy don't supply three phase meters. I only I have to have a three phase meter. So at the moment, we're still trying to work out whether there can be a sub meter or another method of connecting this to Ovo's uh, central system so they can see what's going on with it. It's kind of important. I can't read what's happening with this. That's one problem I have at the moment. The second problem is my Nissan Leaf can charge on this, this machine really well. It's really effective. There's the connector. It's a Chadamo connector. Plugs straight into my Nissan Leaf. Boom, I can charge the Nissan Leaf in just no time. This is pumping 22 kilowatts into the Leaf. So much faster than it would be if I was plugged into uh, you know, an ordinary a zappy charger or something like that. So that works brilliantly. It charges, but my Nissan Leaf is the very first model and it doesn't have the software and the electronics built within it to be able to deliver power as well as accept it. So it doesn't work on my Nissan Leaf. Well, thankfully, fully charged show has a Nissan Leaf that we lease as a, as a crew car, uh, which is currently in Bristol. <laughs> I can't bring it up here. <laughs> I love, the, I love when, it, when a problem has got piles and piles and layers of, of issues on it. So eventually we'll be able to plug in uh, the Nissan Leaf and that will be able to, to charge from this and also discharge from this. But we need, the, we need to be able to read the software in order to be able to set that up. So eventually it will be absolutely possible and other people are doing it already. This is just my own issues uh, to be able to run their house completely from their car. So the idea is, with this stuff, is always the same thing, which is what people, takes people a while to, to get this. And it took me a long time to understand it. Electricity varies in price enormously. The wholesale price of electricity varies enormously, depending on demand. Because what you have to do with the grid is you have to balance the demand with the supply. So if there's too much supply, you've got a problem. And you need to bring up the demand to take it. To take that extra supply, if there's too little supply, you've got a problem, so you need to reduce the demand. Those two things have got to be kept in balance, and they actually keep them like this. They're doing this all the time, every few seconds. They're going like this all the time, keeping them going up and down. But what happens with that is that there are periods of the day when there's enormous demand, and there's periods of the day and night in particular where there's very low demand, but the supply can be quite big, particularly with renewables. So what you want to be able to do is do things like charge a car at night when electricity is clean, and cheap and use that electricity in the day when electricity might be expensive and dirty. It's not really ever that dirty in the UK, but in other places it is. And that is the, the, the chief uh, aim of setting up systems like this. So when one day, soon, I'll be able to show you how a vehicle to grid system works. But today isn't that day, very sadly. Very frustrating. You have to be patient with new technology. It's numpties like me that need to do this stuff because then they can iron out all the little problems they've had with it so that when they roll it out big time, it works for normal people. Well, that is all I've got time for, but uh, you know, I hope that explained some of the complexities of my ever ever increasingly complex system. Uh, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Have a look at the Patreon link. Look at the membership thing. Just the one click, it's easy. The membership thing's nice on YouTube. Uh, ring a bing, ring the ding ding bell thing. And uh, phew, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.